Welcome to e-commerce exchange where we talk about all things online retail and marketing. This episode we are talking to Eastside Co's founder and CEO Jason Stokes. Morning Jason. Morning Matt. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? Yes, all right, thanks. This episode Jason's going to be talking us through the importance of customer loyalty. Um, so we're going to be having a chat about why it's important to brands and to customers and how you can really make the most of that as, a, as a, an e-commerce merchant. So to begin with, so the, the concept of customer loyalty, it's not really a, a new one I suppose, it's been around ever since, I don't know, people started trading back in the day uh, with their goats and chickens. <laughs> um, but I suppose what we're interested in now is in the digital age, how does customer loyalty look, how has that evolved and, and how does that work now? So taking it back to the goats and chickens a second, Matt, like customer loyalty has been underpinned by customer experience. You would buy certain things from a certain merchant based on the relationship that you'd built up mm -hmm. and the positive experience that you'd had from that merchant. And in this day and age, you know, we've seen the emergence of kind of reward-based loyalty schemes from big retailers like Tesco's with a club card where you can earn points to redeem kind of a, a later stage. Um, you know, you're building up that kind of loyalty in that customer by giving them a reason to come back and earn something. Um, from a bond and a relationship point of view, they feel that they've got some really good value from returning to kind of come, come back and shop. Um, and I think, you know, over the past few years, this has emerged kind of online uh, with and off the back of platforms like Shopify and Shopify Plus that are very agile, that have unlocked a lot of potential for kind of small to medium and now even large size merchants to be able to execute this really effectively um, with third party tech partners um, that are very much plug and play, but give power of, give the power of a big business um, from a you know, reward loyalty based kind of scheme. So in terms of a, a loyalty program, mm -hmm. what do you think are the, the key things to, to integrate with that? What are the traits of a good one? Um, that's a really good question, Matt. And we've been, I guess, very fortunate to work with a number of uh, merchants that have kind of implemented loyalty, um, loyalty programs. And we've been involved in that kind of implementation integration uh, and also kind of the different touch points throughout the customer journey. Uh, Ren Skincare uh, is probably a good example of a loyalty program that we've helped um, kind of implement on Shopify Plus uh, and with a tech partner called Loyalty Line. Um, Loyalty Line have a really good piece of software um, that plugs into Shopify Plus really, really nicely and enables you, as kind of mentioned with the club card scenario earlier, to collect kind of points for, uh, I guess, doing different actions. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can configure this in a lot of different ways. One of them uh, is to offer kind of points for spend. So very, very similar to the kind of club card model, yeah. where the more you spend, the more points you have, and you can redeem for vouchers uh, or money off uh, later purchases. Mm -hmm. um, the other way uh, to kind of incentivize you know, customer loyalty um, for other actions that enhance or kind of elevate your business a little bit more is to incentivize kind of account sign up. Yep. You get 10 points if you sign up an account. That means you can get more data on that customer. So if you have more data on the customer, you can build a better profile for who that customer is. So, so then that's an exchange between the customer, they're giving up their information in return for rewards from the merchant. A little bit, yeah. Mm. And then you can further kind of use that to tailor the experience to offer a more kind of personalised feel, uh, not just on the website, but also trigger emails, happy birthday emails, for instance. Uh -huh. um, you know, I get, one of the, like I said, things earlier about customer loyalty is based on customer experience. Mm -hmm. And if you're offering an experience on the front end to the customers that's personalised, tailored to them, that you demonstrate that you really know your customer, then the customer will feel valued. Okay. Um, going back to the whole Ren kind of skincare um, implementation, um, one of the other things that they've baked into it is also points for referring friends or points for reviews. Mm -hmm. So again, encouraging customers to become advocates of your brand yeah. and shouting about the great products that you've got uh, and being able to introduce the brand to friends uh, and family that they find they might find kind of you know, the products or the service really interesting as well. That's great. That fits nicely in with, we did a previous podcast uh, with our marketing director, Lewis, where he talked about his scale framework and the E in scale stands for evangelize. That kind of dovetails nicely with what you're talking about. So you're actually getting your customers to be brand ambassadors mm. and to do the marketing on your behalf effectively. 
I mean, we see this from a, a strategy point of view yeah. uh, as an incredibly powerful part of that puzzle. Um, you've obviously got to get a lot of things right in the first instance, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that you have, uh, without going into too much detail on some of the other previous podcasts, but um, you know, driving traffic, making sure that the traffic you're driving is relevant, mm -hmm. is converting at a kind of a healthy rate. Um, but then from a business point of view on the kind of flip side of that, that you're retaining those customers and customer retention is hugely, hugely important for any business. Um, it costs, depending on verticals, somewhere between five and 25% times more to acquire new customers than it does to kind of sell to existing customer bases. Um, so just from a seat, you know, cost per acquisition point of view, um, you've already spent money to acquire that customer. As long as you've got the right formula to keep, I guess, building that customer base and monetizing it for second, third, fourth sale, um, you know, your business is going to keep growing. Um, so yeah, you know, just from a metric point of view, from an understanding, you know, business principle, it's incredibly important to make sure that you're building that customer base. But, you know, going back to the kind of the question you asked to start with, like, it's all underpinned by having the right things set up to start with so that your customer is going to become loyal. Like you need to make sure that you've got your, the website experience that you're offering to your customer end to end is really nice, it's seamless, it works, it, the path to purchase is intuitive. And personalised, like you said. Yeah. And personalised as a, you know, but it, even customers that we work with that can't get the basics right, from just a customer service point of view, like, do they have phone numbers, is it easy to, you know, get information about orders, returns, uh -huh. you know, the basics of e-commerce that a lot of brands, a lot of large brands can do very well, a lot of small brands can now do exceptionally well, but still kind of have problems with making sure that that customer knows exactly how to kind of purchase, knows exactly what to expect from a, a shipping, a delivery point of view. Builds that trust. Builds that trust. Yeah. Is there an opportunity for you to be able to offer free shipping? Mm -hmm. uh, is there an opportunity for you to be able to offer kind of like VIP schemes for customers that have reached a certain lifetime value where they then end up having, you know, free shipping? Yeah. Almost like the Amazon kind of Prime model where you've got kind of like a, a membership kind of subscription where you pay for something up yeah. front, like Prime, and you then you, know, you get free shipping or you get free next day or you know you've got some type of you know membership incentivization to then be able to come back and spend more because you've got a lot of other um kind of back end back office yeah um kind of incentives as a membership so obviously personalization is very important when it comes to um a customer loyalty program i think from a as a customer for me simplicity is important as well so i don't want to be bombarded with lots of options you know buy this in order to achieve this. I think if there was an app where it was just very clear to me what I would be getting in exchange for purchasing, or you know, the, what the benefits are to me. So I think having a, a clear loyalty program is, is a important thing for me as a customer. Would you agree with that? Or? Yeah, completely, Matt. Um, there's a lot of companies that can make things very busy and very complicated, um, which you know, can have the adverse effect of kind of scaring off or confusing the customer as to what type of reward they're going to be getting for what type of action they're going to be taking. Yeah. And then leave and try and purchase the product somewhere else. Um, you, know, you can make these, like I said, rewards very, very simple where it's just points based. Leave out the rest of the other mm. um, you know, complicated actions that you're trying to get the customer to do. Having said that, I do like um, kind of the gamification style of, of things. I've, um, I'm a bit of a video gamer, so I'm always you know, you can see the rewards building and that kind of interface, I always think works quite nicely as well. It does, like gamification from an engagement point of view is a really nice way to incentivize a customer at, or enticing a customer to kind of play along, as it were. Yeah. Um, and for you to be able to, you know, guide the customer through different objectives that you want them to take and, you know, spin this wheel, win this, these types of points. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's lots of different touch kind of touch points that you could kind yeah. of, you know, incentivize the customer. And you can do that throughout the path to purchase journey. You know, it doesn't need to be, you know, spin a wheel on exit intent. It could be, you know, anywhere throughout the process where the customer's kind of got to the cart and you're like, okay, do you want to win this product? You know, yeah. spin this wheel, you know, from an engagement and a conversion rate dropout point of view. Mm -hmm. This is where, you know, you can really get some good uplift um, at different touch points throughout the journey. Um, going back to kind of keeping it simple, um, I kind of had an experience recently where I was doing some shopping and apparently I was folded into a kind of customer loyalty scheme 
without knowing it. And I think part of the reason was because I moved address mm -hmm. um, and I didn't get the post or I've been away for a little bit and I haven't kind of been checking my emails as diligently. Um, sorry, customers. Um, <laughs> haven't been checking my emails as diligently as I probably should have been. Uh, but um, I went in to purchase something from a company called The White Company and uh, I'd done some Christmas shopping there last year, quite a lot of Christmas shopping. And went to, I can't remember what it was now that I was buying, but buying something from your house. And um, they turned around and said, oh, you've, you're kind of in our VIP customer list. You've got 15% off everything in store. Mm. I didn't know this. I couldn't remember receiving anything. But from a customer loyalty point of view, me now knowing that, I've gone back and done quite a lot of my Christmas shopping there again this year. Yeah. Um, it makes me feel quite you know, special, as it were. Yeah. Um, I would have liked to have received the emails and been notified about this or... Um, <laughs> they, could work on, they could work on their comms, but... They the could work on the comms, which the marketing team may reach out to. <laughs> um, but from a, uh, like from a kind of a... An experience guess, an point experience of view. An experience and a yeah. relationship point of view, uh -huh. it's simple. Like, you know, there's no kind of hefty reward point system, you know, mm. do this to earn this. Yeah. It's, they've got a bracket from a spend point of view. And if you spend over that threshold, you're a, you know, a customer that you know, they feel they want to reward for that level of spend and that level of loyalty. Yeah. Um, and we've got a few other merchants in the past that have done very similar kind of programs where they've had customers that if they spend over a certain amount, either in lifetime or in a certain amount you know, of time, being mm -hmm. a year, that they get rolled into kind of a VIP or a platinum um, kind of level tier yep. where they have free shipping, exclusive access to exclusive drops, like product drops, mm. um, and quite a few other member kind of benefits, as it, as it were. Um, and I think, you know, part of this, when you get to a certain size, is building that community around existing customers to make them feel as special as possible. You know, from a loyalty point of view, it's not just about offers and reward points. It's also about, you know, how you offer value, what your value proposition is beyond just money saving. It's beyond relationship, yeah. you know, it's relationship building, community building. And the customer's affinity with that brand. And the customer's and, affinity yeah. to the brand. A good example of a client that we've got that has a, you know, a really big community following is LazyOf. Mm -hmm. um, they put a lot of content out there, a lot of products that are kind of designed and engineered for the following that they've built up. You know, they're a unique brand, um, but a unique brand that's built a very good cult following that's yeah. growing kind of internationally. So, you know, loyalty for LazyOf is not just how do we give discounts? It's how do we make our customers feel like they're valued mm -hmm. from end to end point of view, whether that's content, whether that's kind of pop ups to make sure that their customer base, the loyal customer base has kind of fast release, that they're treated like kind of you know, individuals. Yep. The content from Lima point of view is personalized as well. So it's mm -hmm. that end to end approach rather than just one vertical of, you know, let's give you some points for money off. Yeah, that's great. So once you've got Talk about these brands that kind of really engage with their customer base. They get them to then continually come back and, and purchase from them. Um, I suppose that the next logical or another way of doing that is through a subscription model. Mm. So do you think that works well from a, a loyalty point of view as well? Yeah, uh, this is kind of going into lifetime value as well. So lifetime value uh, and repeat business, kind of as mentioned, it's very expensive, can be very expensive to acquire a customer. Mm -hmm. Slightly different if you can manage to Kind of acquire a customer on a subscription model, you can be a little bit more aggressive in the front end to actually acquire the customer from a spend point of view. Yep. If you know that you have a sticky subscription model where customer churn kind of is as low as possible. Um, part of that, again, is having a really good product. You know, people will stay subscribed to you know, models for razors or for deodorant or you know, a lot of different like dog food or meal-based meal -based products. A lot of beer-based ones at the moment as well, aren't there? Yeah, there's a, there's a, lot, of, uh, a lot of wine kind of different types yeah. of alcohol. Yeah. It, the, the market's really, really ignited over the last few years. But it, it, you know, it all comes down to the product at the end of the day and the service. You know, part of this is, you know, if the product is good quality, if the service is, you know, top level, mm -hmm. the customer will be, you know, naturally more loyal than if you've got, you know, a, a terrible product and a terrible service, but you've got a loyalty scheme. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah. this is what I was kind of saying uh, a little bit earlier on about getting the basics right. You know, you need to walk before you run from setting up an e-com business point of view. You know, you need to be able to be confident in the basics that you've got, that the customers are having that good experience, that they're happy with this experience before you start trying to throw incentivizations at them to 
manipulate them to be part of the community mm. rather than incentivise them to be part of the community, if that yeah. makes sense. Interestingly, because you, you talked earlier about the basics and getting that right, so customer service, um, the shipping, all those kind of, you know, the, the experience that you've, that you've kind of had as the main thread here. Um, and HubSpot did a, a report that said that 96% of people, even if they, uh, the company had, had fucked something up, they would, um, they would continue to purchase from them if they rectified the mistake and apologised for it. So I think that's, that's key as well, isn't it? It's, yeah. You know, everyone makes mistakes, things do go wrong, but I think if, if the business is it's able to, to rectify yeah, it... It's listening to feedback. Yeah. As a, you know, as a big, big point, it's, you need to listen to what your customers are telling you and be able to act on that and show that you've actually acted on that. You know, there are a lot of companies that you know, do take feedback very, very seriously, yep. not just on a service level, but on a product level. Mm -hmm. How can we make our products better? You know, what is it that our customers want? Um, you know, having focus groups, really kind of getting in, under the kind of, you know, into the DNA of what, you know, what your brand should be kind of putting out there and what your customers really want or expect to see and kind of how you, they expect to be kind of treated. Yep. Um, it's incredibly important. And um, again, a lot of it goes back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you're talking to your customers how they feel they should be talked to, making sure they're getting the support from an end-to-end -end point of view that is seamless. And again, that making sure all the data that feeds into one system so that if a customer does have an issue, your customer service team actually can pull up everything about that customer, understand what they've purchased in the past, understand who that customer is, you know, and be able to offer that experience, like I said, end to end, so there is a single view of who that customer is from a data point of view, yep. whether it be on the purchase side or whether it be on the unfortunate kind of review or complaint side. Uh -huh. Okay, so what would your, if you were to give your top three tips to online retailers um, to help them kind of improve their customer loyalty, what would you say? I think the first has to start with the product and the service that you offer. Before anything else, you need to make sure that your product um, you know, is the best that it could be in the marketplace, as well as your service, um, you know, as the first tip. The second one would be the website experience or the, the experience of the purchase, you know, that path to purchase, you know, making sure the customer has a, you know, really nice, really easy, really user-friendly kind of experience end to end. And, you know, those two uh, kind of so much more of an important factor than any reward or loyalty scheme kind of that you could set up. You know, the last one would be to, you know, incentivize that repeat, um, you know, customer reward that repeat business mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people would put that at the top of the you know the top of the three but for me it all comes down to it's easier to do the incentivization the reward once you have the other two nailed down really nicely um, okay so if you were to give your top three tips to online retailers um, to help them improve their customer loyalty what would you say I think the first one would have to be focus on your product focus on your product and service make sure that you're the best in the market at what you're selling. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one would be the website experience, you know, that purchase journey, making sure it's enjoyable for the customer to keep coming back and purchasing repeat, you know, repeatedly from you. And the third one would be that incentivization and reward, you know, making sure that you do reward kind of good customer loyalty to your brand. So have you got any, any examples you've come across of, of brands doing loyalty badly? Not to name kind of a couple of brands, but there are some examples of... Oh, no names required. Okay, yeah. Um, there are a couple of examples where I've seen this kind of implemented in the wrong way or um, you know, not as effectively as it really should be. One of them is trying to incentivize loyalty before the customer's actually a customer. Mm -hmm. So kind of almost scaring the customer off by throwing big loyalty schemes or complex loyalty schemes in front of them without them actually kind of being an engaged first purchaser anyway. So it's too early. So it's too early yeah. in the journey. You know, you've not managed to turn them into a brand advocate or a, you know, a loyal customer because they haven't experienced any you know, business yet. They, they don't know what your service or your product's like. Yeah. Um, so that was the first one. Uh, and the second one is companies that kind of treat very heavily discounting kind of merchandising tactics and then confuse those with loyalty or kind uh -huh. of loyalty schemes. So. You know, there's brands that do this for customers, but second purchase, third purchase, where they're really kind of heavily discounting or bundling or um, you know, using different merchandising tactics to try and incentivize loyalty rather than incentivizing loyalty in a rewards-based mm. um, kind of framework. So I guess there is a place for discounting, but it's not a loyalty scheme per se. It's, they're two very different things, aren't they? I mean, you can build brand loyalty based on you know, being very cost-effective or yeah. one of the cheapest places to go to. Uh -huh. um, but your customers probably aren't going to feel that emotive about your brand if you're just known as 
the discount place. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's better to lean on product, service, and also community, and that value proposition, and what is, what is it that you do, um, you know, to build that out, and build that relationship with the customer, offering them rewards for continued custom, rather than just discount, discount, discount. Thanks, Jason, for putting aside the time to talk to us this morning about customer loyalty. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any comments below about any other topics that you'd like us to cover in future episodes of e-commerce exchange. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next time.